All right, if you're a child ages five years old to third grade, you can be dismissed for Children's Church with Miss Vanessa as you can exit now. And thank you, Liz, for leading us in worship today and the rest of our worship team. If you noticed, all of our songs were about who? God. Do you notice that? All of our songs were about God. It's like we, it's like we came to worship Him right? Well, since our songs were about God, and since Jesus rules, let's go to God in prayer. Will you join me at this time? Father, you are great. You do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. God, we trust in your steadfast love. God, our, our hearts rejoice in your salvation. Father, I pray as we look at your word, God, we need help looking at your word. God, it is a spiritual war, a spiritual battle when we come to your word. Our minds, our thoughts can go a thousand different directions at this time. God, will your spirit today lead us? May Jesus rule in our thoughts. May Jesus rule in this sermon. It's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. All right, we are looking at the book of Colossians, so if you would, uh, let's go ahead and turn to the book of Colossians. We've learned as you're turning that Jesus is preeminent. It's a big word, right? Preeminent. Uh, let's see if someone remembers. What does preeminent mean? First. There you go. First. I like that, Gaylene. Number one, first. If Jesus is preeminent, if he is first, that means Jesus is first in all the universe. Jesus is first here on earth. He's first over the, over the sky. He is preeminent over the, the animals in the field. Jesus is preeminent right now in our time of worship. But today, I want us to examine a throne, if you will. I want us to take a look at a throne that Many people, maybe even some of you here today, may find it difficult to surrender this throne to the preeminence of Christ, to the rule of Jesus, if you will. And truth be told, there's a battle going on right now. There's a war that's raging over the throne that I'm talking about. So this morning, we're going to continue talking about spiritual growth. That's what we've been looking at since the beginning of the year. And today, I want us to talk about today the battleground for spiritual growth. The sermon title today is The Battle of the Mind. Colossians, we're going to read all of Colossians 3, but we're going to start at Colossians 2, 6, and 7. We're going to turn the page, look at all of Colossians 3 and Colossians 4, 1, okay? It's a lot of back and forth, but just stick with me, okay? Colossians, let's start off in chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. We honor the reading of God's Word this morning by standing as we read through uh, the breathed out, inspired Word of God. The Apostle Paul writes, Colossians 2, 6 and 7 has been our theme verse in 2022 thus far. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Turn the page. Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life 
is now hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. Look at verse 5, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and you have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Verse 12, put on then... As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all of these, put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. In whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Verse 18, wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord in whatever you do. Work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Chapter 4, verse 1, Paul continues his thought, Masters, then, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. So, the number is 70,000. Cleveland Clinic released this number. It's 70,000 thoughts run through your mind every single day. Isn't that a lot of thinking? 70,000 thoughts run through your mind every single day. Now the question becomes, what are thoughts? Webster's Dictionary defines a thought as an idea a plan, an opinion, or even a picture that is formed in your mind. It's something that you think of. So, let's use this statistic. Let's use this statistic of 70,000 times during the day that you're thinking, you're planning, you have pictures, you have these opinions that dominate your thinking. They dominate your mind. Now, some of your thoughts aren't bad. Maybe, maybe some of your thoughts are, are good memories, right, of yesteryear. 
Maybe some of your thoughts are some great ideas. You've got this great idea. Maybe you're going to read the Bible in a year. Maybe you're going to attend a prayer meeting. Maybe you're going to, here you go, kids. You have a thought. You're going to start doing homework immediately after school's over. That's a good thought, right? Some people have a good thought of starting an exercise program, of losing weight, and the thoughts could go on and on. But then there are other thoughts that come into our mind. What's the doctor's report going to show this week when I go to the doctor? It's going to be bad news. Is it serious? Some thoughts, I can't believe that person believes that about COVID, right? Or that person, they call themselves a Christian and they voted for that politician one way or the other. One look at that picture on the internet won't hurt anything. Some people think that they are not good enough. Some people think they have no value. There's no worth. There's thoughts going through the mind, I don't have time to read the Bible, I don't have time to pray, I don't have time to exercise. Like, I could go on and on with the thoughts that run through our mind, and I really hope you get the idea of what we're talking about. Today, I want us to examine this battle, the battle of the mind, if you will. So we're going to look at the first four verses of Colossians chapter 3. We've learned that Jesus is preeminent We've learned that Jesus rules. We've looked at the process of spiritual growth. Even last Sunday, if you were not here last Sunday, I gave us just a really easy, really practical way to read the Bible. So we've looked at all of this in Colossians. Now the battle begins. So what I want us to do today is to look at three ways spiritual strength continues in the mind. Three ways spiritual strength continues in the mind. So, the first point I want us to talk about today is spiritual strength continues in the mind as a result of our new identity. Look at the first part of Colossians 3 verse 1 with me. Paul writes, if then you have been raised with Christ… What Paul is doing here, he's continuing a thought from Colossians chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. In Colossians 2, 13, Paul wrote, And you who were dead in your trespasses. Let's stop there. So because of sin, we were spiritually dead. Death brings decay. But Paul continued in chapter 2, But God made us alive together with Him, having forgiven us all of our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This He set aside by nailing it to the cross. Look at what else He did. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in Him, speaking of Christ. So, Paul has just finished teaching us that if your faith is in Christ, then you are not dead in your sins. But God has transformed you, and you are made alive in Christ. Since you are made alive in Christ, you are a new person. This is your identity. If your faith is in Christ, you are made alive in Christ, you are a new person. We just learned Satan has no dominion over you. Praise the Lord. Satan has no rule, he has no kingdom over you because he was defeated by the death of Jesus on the cross. If you are a child of God, you are alive. Now, we still sin, we fall, still fall short of the glory of God, but God has made us alive. So, today, do you believe this? 
Do you believe what Paul wrote, this truth here in Colossians 3.1? If you have been raised with Christ, if you believe that, that you have been raised with Christ, this means your thoughts are made new. This means your mind has been renewed. Let's look at what Scripture says about this. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Paul writes, I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Child of God today, your mind has been renewed. It is made new. Your mind, your thoughts have been made alive in Christ. So that's the foundation that we've got here. We now know we have a new identity in Christ. We know that our mind has been made new. Now, what does this look like? It's easy for us to stand up here and say, easy for me to stand up here and say, your mind is made new, your thoughts are new. What does this look like? Well, let's continue in our journey. Colossians verses 3 and verses 1 and 2, we see secondly today, That spiritual strength continues in the mind with thoughts of Jesus. Very easy. Thoughts of Jesus. Let's reread verses 1 and 2 of Colossians chapter 3. If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Paul uses a word in this passage, above, two times. He uses the word above twice. He instructs us to seek those things that are above. Then he tells us in verse 2 to set our minds on things that are above. So, what's above? What's he talking about? The stars? We to set our mind on the stars and let the stars guide our path. We to set our minds on the sun or the moon, the clouds that are above. No, he told us in verse 1 what's above. He said, seek the things that are above where Christ is. He is seated at the right hand of God. Of God. So what's above? Jesus. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, which means he has authority. He has dominion. He has rule. Oh, he has this word that we now know. He has preeminence over all things. So we are to seek him who is above. Verse 2 tells us to set your minds. What that literally means in the Greek language that Paul wrote this in It means to set the thoughts of your mind, the thoughts of your mind on things that are above. So, what are we to set our thoughts on? Jesus, Christ, and His preeminence. But if we are truly honest, which I hope we all are, if we are truly honest with each other, and if we are truly honest before God, This goes against all that we are, right? If we're truly honest, this goes against all that we are. It's easy for me, it may be easy for you, I don't know, to say that Jesus has preeminence over the universe. He has preeminence over the sun, over the moon, over the stars, over the deer in the field, over the squirrels in our front yard. But to say that Jesus rules over my mind Jesus has preeminence over my thoughts? That's difficult. Why? Because it's easier to listen to our thoughts than to listen to the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Can I say that again? It is easier to listen to our thoughts 
than to listen to the Holy Spirit that lives within us. For example, let's use an example. Here's a thought. I'm not saying any of you all have ever thought this before. It could be a thought. I don't have time to read the Bible today. I don't have time to pray. If you keep listening to that thought, if you keep replaying that thought in your mind over and over, I don't have time to listen. I don't have time to read the Bible. I don't have time to pray. If you keep listening to that thought, what's going to happen? You're not going to read the Bible. You won't pray. Even though we have time to eat, even though we have time to sleep, even though we have time to go to work, even though we have time to binge watch Fox News or CNN or two seasons of a show on Hulu. Another thought, I I can't understand this book. I can't understand the, the Bible. Well, if you keep listening to that thought that's running through your mind, you're not going to read the Bible. Why? Because you keep listening to this thought that you're not going to understand what you're going to read. Another thought, I'm not going to go to church this weekend. I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to watch online. If you keep listening to that thought, you're not going to go to church. Even though if you were to stumble on concert tickets or you got movie tickets, you'll push through even though the fatigue and even though it's a two-hour movie. You can push through that. You see, I can go on and on with all of these thoughts that we may have that go through our mind, but I hope we understand the point that that I'm trying to make here. We listen to our thoughts more than we realize. So in addition to these 70,000 thoughts that are running through our mind, then you have other voices from the outside that are coming in, these voices that surround us. If you listen to the voices of the world, if you watch the news, any at all, you are going to leave thinking there is absolutely no hope whatsoever for our world, for our universe. There's no hope if you're listening to that outside voice for any amount of time. We have voices from movies, from television shows that are bombarding us, saying homosexuality, divorce, living together, that is all normal. But what did we just read? Colossians 3, 2. Set your minds on things that are above. How do we do this? How do we set our minds on what's above? How do we think about Jesus? How do we think about our risen Lord when we have over 70,000 thoughts just bombarding us with all of these other voices coming in to our mind every single day? Do we go off into a cave and seclude ourselves? That's not what Paul's talking about here. He's not talking about that we become otherworldly. He even showed us at the end of chapter 3 how how our renewed mind, our renewed thoughts change our way of living. It changes, changes our marriage. It changes our parenthood. It changes being a child. It changes being a bondservant, being a master. Today, I want us to see three ways. I want to talk about three ways today. You can set your thoughts on Jesus, who is above. So, let's try it. You ready? Three ways you can set your thoughts on Jesus. The first way, recognize that the battle in your mind is a spiritual battle. Recognize the battle in your mind, it's a spiritual battle. You can't defeat your thoughts with more positive thoughts. You can't, de- you can't defeat your thoughts, these bad thoughts, with more positive thoughts. Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying that positive thinking is bad. But spiritual growth in the Christian life is more than just replacing a bad thought with a positive thought. Why? Because we have too many bad thoughts inside of us. 
We have too many bad thoughts that surround us. And for us to go to war against Satan with a few positive thoughts about ourselves, it's not going to work. So since the battle of the mind is spiritual and since you have been raised with Christ and you have a new identity, God hasn't left you alone for this battle. God has given us His Spirit. Romans chapter 8, beautiful passage, talks about the Spirit. Romans 8 verses 5 and 6, for those who live according to the flesh, if those who are living according to the flesh, Paul said, will set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, they set their minds, their thinking, on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. We already talked about earlier at the beginning of the service, God is giving us a choice, life or death. So to set your mind on the things of the flesh, on the things of the world, that brings death. Paul continued, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Do you want peace in a situation you're facing? Do you want life in a situation that you're facing? Recognize first that the battle of your mind is spiritual. Second, this is a tough one, buckle up, you ready? Discipline your mind. Discipline your mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 45, Paul puts it beautifully. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but our weapons of our warfare have divine power to destroy strongholds. So we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Paul said, as we who have a new identity in Christ, we take every thought captive. This means we capture our thoughts and we make our thoughts prisoner. How do we take these thoughts captive that we talked about earlier? I can't read the Bible. How do you take that thought captive? I can't pray. How do you take that thought captive? I'm not valuable. I'm not worth anything. How do we capture these thoughts and take them to be a prisoner? If it's true that we are in a battle and we first recognize that our battle in the mind is spiritual, and we really and truly want to take these thoughts captive, then we need to arm the Spirit of God with a strong weapon against your thoughts. Ephesians 6, 17 says, We take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Can I ask you, are you filling your mind with the Word of God? Think about when Satan tempted Jesus, all the way back in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4. When Satan tempted Jesus, what weapon did Jesus use against the weapons of Satan? The Word of God. God has given you His Word for knowledge of Himself. He's given your word, His Word for spiritual growth. But God's Word is also the weapon that the Spirit uses against the fiery attacks of our enemy. So, are you filling your mind with the Bible? Again, I know we have, we're filling our mind with all these 70,000 thoughts and these outside voices, but are you filling your mind with God's Word? Have you, last week we talked about setting aside time and a place to read the Bible. Have you done that yet? Have you set a time, a, a designated time during the day, a designated place that you fill your mind with God's Word, to hear what He says. There are times, I brought this with me today, there are times when I'm having my quiet time. Just last week, there was a verse as I was reading in Ephesians that really impacted me, really encouraged me. So I wrote it down on an index card. And I have all these index cards in here. So then I keep this index card with me in my pocket, 
back pocket of my wallet somewhere. And during the day, when these thoughts start coming into my mind, negative thoughts or bad thoughts, evil thoughts, I take this verse out that I wrote down and I read it. I just read it to myself, read it quietly. It doesn't take long. But what I'm trying to do is take captive the thoughts that run into my mind. Here's a verse right here. Last August, I had knee surgery. I get kind of nervous when I go into surgery. I don't know about you. I'm human. But as I started getting nervous and those thoughts started going into my mind, what happens if the anesthesia, if I can't wake up, what happens if they uh, do surgery on the wrong leg, what happens if they cut my leg off, you know, all of these thoughts. When those thoughts start coming into my mind, I took out this verse. You are great. You do marvelous deeds. You are God alone. It takes captive those thoughts. Now, talking about filling your mind with God's Word, let me encourage you, continue to do that. But as you go about your day, it's kind of difficult to carry this book along with you for some of you. So how do you fill your mind with God's Word, with, with the truth of the gospel? Listen to Christian music. Don't let that replace your time in the Word. Let that supplement your time in the Word. Listen to Christian music. Listen to music that reminds us of Christ. Attend Sunday worship. Attend Sunday school. Many of you go to YouTube. You watch 12 hours of YouTube videos a day. Listen to sermons on YouTube. They are there. Trust me. Lots of sermons on YouTube. Listen to podcasts with God's Word. Here's a good one. Read missionary biographies. If you don't have a missionary biography, if you don't know where to find one, we have a beautiful library right over here beside of the sanctuary that has missionary biographies in it. Take a missionary biography. It is amazing. Surround yourself with Christian friends who remind you of God and who He is. I could go on and on. But I've talked about all throughout Colossians how spiritual growth doesn't happen in an instant. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to be intentional. So my encouragement today is to go on the offensive in your mind. Discipline your mind when the word, with God's Word. And the result of doing this when you go on the offensive and you're filling your mind with God's Word, do you know what happens? Isaiah 26.3 says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And the final way to, give, to think thoughts of Jesus is to give him praise. To give Jesus praise. Philippians 4.8 if you're going to go home today and get index cards and start writing down verses and keep them in your pocket, can I encourage you? Philippians 4, 8. Start there. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Paul writes, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about those things. Isn't it easier to allow bad thoughts to control how you think about someone or how you think about something? For some people, they have struggles with feeling any worth or any value. Well, if that's the case, let's take Philippians 4, 8 and take that thought captive. If you're feeling worthless and not valuable, Philippians 4, 8 says, Think about what is true. So if you're having thoughts of worthlessness, what's true? What's true is what Scripture says. God has created you in His image. He has created you with a purpose. He has created you with value. Think about that. Write that down if you must. Give God praise then for creating you in his image. Thank Jesus for dying on the cross for you, your sins. For some people who are married, maybe your spouse did something wrong. That may never happen in your marriage, but in some marriages that does happen. 
or your spouse does something wrong. It's easy to let these thoughts just start going in a thousand different directions, whereas Scripture says, think about what's true about your spouse. God brought you together. Your spouse is created in the image of God. At the same time, your spouse is sinful, just like you, and we are to forgive just as Christ has forgiven us. Maybe some of you, you have a boss, the decisions that your boss is making, you completely disagree with. Well, then think about what is honorable. Think about what is worthy of praise. Perhaps there's something here at the church you disagree with. Maybe it's songs, maybe it's my preaching, maybe it's the type of version of the Bible that we use. How about we start thinking about what is lovely with our church? How about we start thinking what is true about First Baptist Church of Karma? Think about those things and give God the praise And why would we do this? Why would we shift our thinking this way? Because the Bible teaches we are sinners. We rebel against God. We want to listen to our thoughts. We want to seek our own way. But God didn't do that. God didn't think of us as a hopeless case. He loved us. He sent Jesus to pay the penalty for our rebellion by dying on the cross and coming back to life again. Today we have hope, not because God thought the worst of us, but because of his great love. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So today, let me encourage you, take captive your thoughts by thinking about what Jesus has done. Recognize that the battle going on in your mind is spiritual. Ask God for help to discipline your mind with his word. And finally, think about what's true. Think about what's honest. Think about what's pure. Think about what's lovely. Think about what is worthy of praise. And think about those things and give Jesus the praise. And finally, final point, I'll end, verses 3 and 4. We see that spiritual strength continues in the mind until Jesus returns. Real quickly, look at verses 3 and 4. For you have died, your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in in glory. Now, in these verses, Paul reminds us that our life is in Christ. What does that mean, right? Right? Let's kind of use an example maybe some of us are familiar with. Maybe you know someone that you've described in this way before. Sports is their life. You ever heard that before? Or work is their life. Or family. They are wrapped up in their family. That's essentially what that means is someone is wrapped up in these things in the same way Here in Colossians, Paul is saying because we have a new identity and because we are setting our thoughts, our mind on Jesus, we become wrapped up in him. One author wrote about this verse, to the Christian, Christ is the most important thing in life. Nay, more, he is life itself. And when Jesus, who is our life, appears Paul gives us hope. We will appear with him in glory. You see, there's coming a day when the one who gave up his life so we could have life, he will appear. He will come back on the clouds. He will take us to be with him. Jesus is not coming back as a a baby. He's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. He's coming back to reign. We will reign with him. And we, when he appears, we will appear with him. We will hunger no more. We will thirst no more. Revelation says God will come and wipe away every tear from our eyes. And the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, will lead us. But until that day, we wrestle. We wrestle against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. So today, you're in a battle Your mind is in a battle. So today I want to encourage you, ask God for help. Humble yourselves before God. Ask Him for help. 
If you continually give in to those thoughts that run through your mind, I encourage you today, confess this before God. He knows it. Ask Him for strength in the battle. Today, if you're a member of our church, can I read this verse to you? If you're a member, I need you to hear this verse. Paul writes in Philippians 2, verse 2, Complete my joy by being of the same mind. That's for church members. That's for us. Complete my joy, Paul said, by being of the same mind. Can I ask you, if you're a member of our church, do you have the same mind that the Spirit is going to lead our church? Do you have the same thought that the rest of our members have, that we are surrendering our church to the authority and the leadership of the Spirit? Are you seeking God's direction for our church? If not, can I encourage you? God knows it. Confess that before God. And we need you. We need you. You have been called to be of the same mind, to have the same thoughts as the rest of our brothers and sisters here at our church. So today, humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God and join us as we move forward by God's strength as He directs us. And if you're not a Christian today, the Bible says that Satan has deceived you the Bible says he has even blinded your mind to the good news of Jesus. Today, I want you to know that our church is praying for you. We want you to know that God loves you. He sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. Jesus came back to life on the third day so that you can have life and have it abundantly. So today, that's my invitation for us here today. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray?